Yo, what's going on, folks? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rebalance here with another weekly review and outlook. As always, it's not financial advice, educational and entertainment only. Just going to be, you know, explaining some things from my perspective, from the experience I've gained speculating these markets. You know, we always start with the economic calendar. What I was taught is that this is going to be like that TV guy being able to look into the future and see when to expect volatility to enter the marketplace to be just that rocket fuel that I need for the types of trades that I'm trying to take, as well as just being the catalyst to clear up consolidation. And that does not mean that, you know, consolidation is something that can't be traded, but I just say for me personally, I prefer moves that aren't quickly rejected, right? I'd rather not get into those type of environments. What they cause for me is too much opportunity and too much opportunity, too many options for me can lead to either paralysis or to hyper engagement, you know, over trading, revenge trading, things like that. But carrying on. So for the review part, right, just want to look through what transpired last week as far as economic calendar was concerned. So Wednesday, CPI, big boy there. Thursday, PPI with uh, unemployment claims tagged behind that. We had some uh, bond auctions as well that afternoon. And then on Friday, core retail sales, and we had a FOMC member speak. So there was a lot of reason for volatility in the marketplace from Wednesday going all the way to the end of the week. This week, Sunday, no news. Tomorrow morning, we have a red folder. Tuesday, no medium or high impact for the U.S. dollar. Wednesday, no medium or high impact for the U.S. dollar. Thursday, we get unemployment claims, which is now a high impact as well as a couple of orange folders. We're looking at one FOMC member speaking again this week. And on Friday, a couple of uh, high impact folders. So for this week, also looking like the back end is loaded with the, the news that could really get the market out of a consolidation potentially. And so now looking over to the charts, had a dollar chart up here with the daily on the left, weekly on the right. What we see is from last week over here on the right side, we did have a down close week, fifth in a row. And on a daily perspective, we see that Friday was a complete engulfing of Thursday. So we did take out Thursday's low. We traded below this sell side liquidity below the low from February. And we've now bounced out of there, engulfing candle on the daily. And we opened up this week, you know, with a little bit of a slight push up, which we've rejected off of now. So what I'm looking at here is three specific levels on the daily chart that are going to be my last lines of defense before price would get back up to this blue line, which it never did actually touch. But anything above that, I would consider short-term bullishness for the dollar. But currently where it's at now, if you're looking at it from this white dash line here, this is the uh, beginning of April. So since the beginning of April on the daily chart, down, made a low, up, lower high, down, lower low, up, so I will be anticipating a lower high forming. And so that's why I'm just going to really quick mark up the three levels that I'm watching personally. Uh, two of them are kind of be going to kind of going to be overlapped. But this inefficiency here. So I'm going to be watching that. The midpoint of that inefficiency is going to be a really close attention being paid to it. It's already wicked through that midpoint, but look at the rejection since then, right? So I'm going to be looking for a higher time frame, daily, closes, 
near or above that midpoint and kind of using that as some sort of clues as to strength or weakness for the short term, near term, next day or two, right? But so overall, the pink rectangle, the midpoint of it being the most significant area, this March low, which is inside of that, but above the midpoint, right? And then the last one would be the opening price of this up close candle here. So that opening price. And then anything above that, then I'd start to consider the midpoint of the range of this up close candle, uh, how price will respond there. But again, if it gets above this pink rectangular box and above that March, you know, low, and it starts to find support there, those are going to be then concerning as far as short term continuation lower, possibly, you know, a little bit of consolidation of, if you will, before that happens which is still going to allow for other assets like foreign currency and the U.S. stock indices and gold and things like that to be able to then have, you know, one directional, for the most part, moves to, to take place. But so, yeah, so overall for the dollar chart, uh, the analysis, the outlook for the near term is continuation lower how that happens, what resistance levels it uses, things like that are not anything that are going to be determined yet or they, are, they aren't determined yet on my end. So that's why I'm just identifying, right, those main three levels that I will be, you know, monitoring how it responds if it's able to get there. Um, and then to the downside, I'd say we were able to, you know, we created this volume imbalance. We filled it with a body here. We haven't left the area yet, though. So, like, if it is to come back down here, um, it could tap this as support since this was the first, you know, body it laid over it. We haven't come back and touched it yet. Um, I would be looking for the high of this to potentially offer some support to then take us through these levels, right? Um, but if it's not able to find support there, then I would definitely look forward to right breach it rather easily. And then possibly, you know, use that low end of it for some sort of uh, short term resistance to then continue lower. Um, not just given, you know, what price has available currently right now on a daily chart. Not much really to work with besides that. On a weekly chart, you see just a lot of wicks for the most part, you know, a lot of consolidation and then a sharp move. But then still, you know, lots more consolidation on the low end and a high end of a lot of uh, the weekly ranges. But now transitioning over to the U.S. stock indices, my focus this week is going to be primarily on Dow Jones. The reason for that being so over here on the daily chart, and I've mentioned already as far as like, you know, the equilibrium of wicks and tails. Um, there is a new concept that I was introduced to a few weeks ago. Basically the same thing as inefficiencies, but rather than it being something where it's obvious to see like, you know, what I'm typically mapping out, like these inefficiencies, which are now shaded brown because they've kind of inverted already, right? Like, so this was a, a buy side inefficiency. And so one's buy side was offered in here twice now and even, you know, a lot more times as far as these past few days here, um, the buy side was offered and now we've, you know, left that range, right? And so these are obvious to see in a sense, easier to identify. Same thing with this one, right? Where it was a buy side inefficiency off the of buy side here, buy side here, then we left. So um, I've been trained to look at something like this, where we have this long wick, this body, you know what I'm saying? This full body candle for the most part. And then we have this tail down here. There is no inefficiency in between right these three candles but if i measure out the midpoint of this wick and the midpoint of this tail and i extend those out and i use those as like the high and low for example if it was a pretend inefficiency um now it was pretty much the uh, the idea the concept like i was saying that i was introduced to a few weeks ago and so higher time frame is more so something I'm using for like trying to get identify like where's price being drawn to. I mentioned the last one, I'm not really looking to guess the close. That's a little bit more advanced, something that will come to me, you know, at some point if I stay working at this hard and, and stay as, you know, passionate about it. But for now, um, it's not exactly anything that I think is is 
necessary to get to where I'm trying to go. Um, but so as you can see, this blue line here that says TP over there to the right, just meaning, you know, take partial, take profit, whatever. Um, if I'm able to identify some sort of a setup, which makes sense on a smaller time frame after showing some sort of displacement lower, leaving a, uh, you know, a entry signal or entry area that would make sense as far as risk reward is concerned and probabilities. Um, then I would be targeting this level as like a potential area to, again, what it stands for, TP, take partial or take profit. And so as you can see over here on the left, um, this is the 15-minute chart, so it gets a little bit more into detail. You can see since we've opened up where that yellow line is, just basically consolidation, right? So could see price trade back above there, work that level, if you will. But all I'm saying is that if I get some sort of clue whether that be in London or New York tomorrow, that price wants to, you know, find its way back down here. And there's plenty of confluence as far as so on this. This is from the hourly chart, this lighter blue shaded area does inefficiency, a, uh, um, a sell side inefficiency. So it may want to come down here opposite sell side, as well as this darker blue shaded area is a 15 minute sell side inefficiency. So, you know, if the market wants to come down there and offer some sort of sell side within these ranges, uh, I would anticipate it potentially tap in that midpoint of these, you know, this range here from this high of this week to this low. That's basically all I did was measure from this high to this low, made its own range and found the midpoint. So um, that's pretty much as simple as, you know, it can get as far as just utilizing equilibrium as a target rather than trying to use it as an entry. Um, now, what I will say is though, you know, if price is able to get down here, whether I take a trade on its way down there or not, depending on the signal being received, right? Um, I'll still then be looking for clues of price showing signs of continuation back higher because ultimately short term, I am bullish. I was just mentioning how on a dollar chart, you know, I'm bearish right on it, looking at it from the daily and the weekly perspective. So that just is going to mean for me that I'm going to be, you know, risk on or, you know, bullish for things like U.S. stock indices, gold, you know, Euro USD, GBP USD, right? So that will be basically what I'm looking for um, this week, right? I was saying that I was just going to sit last week out, let CPI and PPI do its thing. And we'll talk about that in a second here. Um, but then ultimately just wanted to have that information to be able to use for my analysis, right? Moving into the end of the month. So I'm really just trying to focus on trading like this monthly candle, if you will, um, cutting down on the amount of days that I think that I need to be trading, limiting that to, you know, possibly just a, uh, you know, a couple of times a month, to be honest, right? Like if, if I was doing the math and basically just to double an account, right? It would take about 6% compounded a month, but 8% are not compounded, right? Just 8% from the starting balance, um, whatever that may be if 8% can be consistently brought in on a monthly basis with that, you know, starting balance being whatever it was, and then it increasing also 8% every individual month, but still utilizing the same risk as, you know, what would be perceived as 1% risking towards, you know, whatever percentage gain, um, or, you know, just however someone wants to, right, um, have their risk tolerance level set, but having it at, 8% growth every month that's going to double any account size every year, right? And so with something like that in mind and things like, um, if you're familiar with them, different um, companies that will allow you to take challenges and things like that show that you know how to manage risk and follow their rules, right? To be able to hit certain profit targets and within a deadline and things like that. Um, there's ways to acquire more capital and when you think about something like that, being able to, you know, once you look through the prices and things like that, if you're not familiar with these things that I'm talking about, but once you look through the prices and things like that, just from a purely number standpoint, to me, it makes sense, you know, being able to take, you know, several hundred dollars and potentially turn that into, you know, several, you know, tens of thousands or potentially, you know, a hundred thousand and above 
uh, money worth of, you know, trading capital. Yes, there are limits on it and they have, you know, drawdown rules and requirements and things like that, profit, you know, targets and such and deadlines. But being able to trade with more capital allows more opportunity for, you know, larger profits, right? More satisfying profits. And so when we're talking about something like within a year time frame, something as little as 8% within a month by being patient and selective on when to trade and what types of trades and what type of ranges and conditions and things like that, you know, I want to see. Um, I do believe that, you know, for example, again, some of the accounts, some of the more popular accounts, you could say are probably like, you know, anywhere from 10000 up to $100,000. Right. So let's just say somewhere between that, let's say a fifty thousand dollar account doubled every year. That's a fifty thousand dollar profit. Right. And so I've never made that much at any one job I've worked. You know, I've worked several jobs back to back type thing where, you know, I would work one job, I get off and then I go to the next job type of deal. And years like that or those periods of time, you know, usually no more than a few months where I did things like that then yeah, I was on pace to be making about, you know, $50,000 in a year, but just working one job and not really having any sort of a side hustle or anything like that. And then when I, I mean, when I say jobs, I do mean jobs, like nothing, you know, high, you know, that required any sort of high experience or any type of, you know, skill set that really had to be developed other than, you know, being a decent human and, and the ability to learn. But, um, yeah, I mean, fifty thousand is is a reasonable amount of money to bring in on a year, considering that that's above the average that's being brought in, you know, here in America, which is you know where I currently reside. So, yeah, just perspective, right? Just perspective and logic based on the numbers, and that's just where I'm at in my development. Those are things that I'm thinking about. We'll see how that goes right over the next weeks, months, years, things like that. But just at this current point in time, um, that's where my mind is. That's where the world is as far as the opportunities that are available. But yeah, so um, long story short, though, real quick, just to right, summarize that outlook, because uh, that was the outlook, and then we'll go back and we'll do a review. So dollar lower, U.S. stock indices higher. Focus for me primarily is going to be on the Dow Jones. Also, just looking at the the contrast of its trading last week and um, Nasdaq and S and P's. So, I kind of squinched this up a little bit so we can see the the week from last week starting here. This was Sunday, so we trade lower to start the week. Ultimately, in hindsight, we see Monday we made the lower the week, rip higher consolidate tuesday there was no news very choppy opening to the day eventually though we popped higher still very choppy in there a deep retracement before consolidating right going into london then we get a lot more choppiness but a choppy uptrend took the stops on this dip lower and then we got that punch higher with cpi drift lower off of that consolidate very choppy though run lower retesting basically this daily inefficiency which you can see over here on the right right bounce off of that back above that march high temporarily working that level back down choppy right then the news comes out on thursday we get a punch up same thing punch down clearing lows but then run back up and we never look back difference here is thursday we take out wednesday's high right and then Friday, we punch even higher than Thursday's low. You can see it over here, right? This candle's high is taken out here. This candle's high is taken out here. Now, contrasting that with NASDAQ, we see Wednesday highs all the way up here. We're testing that September 2022 high. We get that nice drop, but we double dip here. We basically trade down to this daily inefficiency here. We tap the high of that. Bounce off of that right back through this but which was potentially inversion level and i mentioned in my last video some sort of higher time frame close below here with momentum leaving an inefficiency or possibly just immediately retesting this and then continuing lower the problem with that was once it traded into this the right level down here we already started to shift market structure if you look at it on a 15 minute perspective we got where we trade we take out this low here right and we got all of this whips on up here. 
<laughs> going into end of day, drifting lower here, taking out those lows right here. And then one more time, this Asia session, punch lower, trade into that daily inefficiency, no willingness to continue lower, not even a 15 minute close with any type of, you know, commitment. Run back above this short term high here. We're leaving this inefficiency up in here. I know it's probably hard to see, but I'm just trying to like, you know, speed through this real quick. Um, I don't really too much talk about the nitty gritty on a smaller time frame as far as like my entries and things like that. Those would be things that once I start live trading, um, you guys would be able to have the benefit of learning those things from me. I see too many entry signals though. And so that's why I'm trying to like bring bring it down a little bit as far as like simplifying which ones I'll use in certain conditions and things like that, right? What are the reasons for me using this versus that? And, you know, what are the reasons for me even to, you know, look to be taking a trade versus not looking to take a trade. So still some things I'm just trying to like, you know, solidify as far as like my, my thought process, my rules, my planning and all of that stuff. Um, But once I, you know, got this stuff down pat, then for sure, um, like I said, that live trading is definitely something that, um, I'm not afraid to do looking forward to it. Think that it'll be beneficial to, you know, a lot of people that, you know, are are willing to learn and who can relate to me. So it should be, you know, a little bit easier for them to learn from me. But yeah, so it starts to get problem problematic down here. And I'm sure if I look at, you know, other things like SP Dow and a dollar chart, but again, I'm not gonna do all of that. Um, but just, you know, me saying it right there to let you know ding 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 right um now i'm using other things in my analysis but so as it's drifting lower taking out lows but not showing any sort of signs of continuation lower and then we start to reject so that sends us right back to this immediate inversion level which is what iil stands for i mentioned that in my last video and i actually had an alert here it did trigger um i did not had it actually set again for the retest um in which of course it triggered but looking at just the time of day and how it was behaving, there was never any commitment through. Now, this possibly looked like it was, but then we get this doji print right here, right before that, you know, 8.30 um, PPI report comes out. So all of those factors lining up and such um, makes 100% sense to me. That release comes out, we punch back through this level, right? Use it as support. And then we actually trade back higher up into um, this other inefficiency here which i believe is from the hourly chart right so a lot of um you know volatility from nasdaq last week but basically the main thing i wanted to show was how that wednesday high was not taken out on thursday but it was taken out on friday and then also looking at s p that wednesday high was not taken out thursday but it was taken out on friday and then just compare and contrast that with Dow. We took out Wednesday's high Thursday, and then we took out Thursday's high on Friday. So to me, Dow's showing the most bullishness. Um, if I'm going to be, you know, trading when they're in sync, for example, I also want to kind of take into consideration which one is the strongest, which one is, you know, the weakest. I don't want to be buying the weakest, and I don't want to be selling the strongest. So if I am going to buy, I either want to buy the strongest or i want to buy the you know one that's in the middle right now i did mention if i saw something for a potential sell setup and i i was just talking about how dow is the strongest why would i want to sell it that's why i'm saying like it would a lot of things have to line up the time of day the um you know quality of the displacement that i see and the uh, type of entry signal that's provided based off of that displacement and things like that right um, so if all those things line up, then I'll be willing to apply some risk to taking a short, but only down to these levels here, right, where I'm kind of watching those to see if there's any reason for it to bounce higher and then start to target, as you can see over here on the right side, um, we've already traded above the high for March. So we're looking at that February high up here. Um, so that would definitely be a target for me or before it gets there, the midpoint of this wick, right? Could even say this high here because that is a swing high. So I'd say those three levels, this high midpoint of this wick, and then the actual high up here, those would be like those three levels I've been looking for. But um, before that happens, first we have to get above the weekly opening price as well as, right, we would need to get above the high from Friday. So once those things um, start to become apparent and obvious, I wouldn't be expecting any sort of turnaround from up there. We strictly just be expecting continuation. Yes, there may be some consolidation, but, um, 
understanding if I'm getting in somewhere down here by this this blue and I'm utilizing a lower time frame for risk management, things like that, the uh amount of, you know, risk to reward is going to be very high. And just to, you know, put an example on there, right? Let's just say, and just using this over here, where it apply here, let's just say I use the low of this candle, which is all the way down here. Basically, let's say I use that as my stop loss and I'm targeting, um, like I said, the first place would be this high. So even in just, you know, targeting this high, that would be a four to one risk reward ratio. So making as much as four times what I'm risking. If I was to use like the midpoint of the wick up here, just eyeballing it, um, let's just say that we're about right here or so. If I'm using that midpoint, so then we're looking at like a four and a half to to one, right? And then we're taking it all up to this high. We're looking at, you know, a six and a half plus to one, right? And by utilizing a smaller time frame for entry and also for risk, you know, as well, but then utilizing the higher time frame, which is what I'm using for my analysis as like where I'm going to be holding the final pieces of that trade. Cause I will be taking partials. Um, that's also something that just to me makes sense, right? Like I start to get in profit 100, 200, 300 points um, out of the potential 820. If this is, you know, some sort of a target within the, this month, right. Um, that still allows for me to have, opportunity to take profit and also to re-enter you know let's say like i take profit and i do get a pullback from that level of potential you know concern of a potential you know retracement or reversal right um if i'm able to pay myself as prices trading through those levels then i have more balance banked more cushion to then be seeking re-entries once those, you know, potential pullbacks are exhausting and then the price is ready to, you know, head back into the trend that it, it's on. So just a lot of things, like I said, I'm factoring in my development right now. Um, take what you will, take what you can. And it makes sense to you to, you know, to be a value. But um, I just wanted to put that tool on there just to show it from that perspective. Um, as we can see, though, definitely have a difficulty choosing any direction. Um, the market did just open a few hours ago. We haven't even seen, you know, a volatility um, be brought into the marketplace through any session. So that first one is going to be London session, which is going to be kicking off in about two and a half hours or so. Um, so in about two and a half hours from now, I would expect the market to begin to produce some sort of uh, volatility that I can then take advantage of. But for now, um, that is where we are. That is the bias. That is, you know, the trade setups that I'm looking at. So a potential sell right down to here and then a potential buy from these areas up to, you know, as far as it plans on going this week. Again, I can't determine where it's going to close. If I believe it's reaching up here, all I can do is control, you know, where I identify as areas for me to get in. Where do I identify as areas of, you know, where if it goes here, that this idea is invalidated, I'm wrong. Let me move back to the sidelines. And um, just areas of where I believe that I should be, you know, paying myself. Right. So um, that's all I can really identify. I can't really um, look at it from a perspective of like, hey, it should close here. And this should be the high that it prints, you know, that that's not something that I can impose my will on. Right. So I'm still learning how to just manage expectations and in a sense, take what the market gives me. Right. I mean, everything can still be planned out, be following, you know, my specific plan that I have for myself um, without it necessarily, you know, being something that's like. I'm a fortune teller and I can tell exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. You know, I don't need to to know all of those things. What I know is sufficient to to do what I'm trying to do. But yeah, so that was the outlook. As I said, again, now what I'll do is I'll change this to the hourly chart over here and then we'll do the quick review. But so last week started here again, down here. Right. So initial just basically consolidation in first those, you know, first two hours or three hours or five hours or whatever. Right. But then we start to drift lower, filling in this inefficiency. We push higher to that weekly opening price. Right. Around uh, like the before a little bit before New York open. We get this drop. 
if we don't trade back down into this level, which has been holding strong for a couple weeks now, didn't quite get there, run back up. So basically just working this daily inefficiency, get back above that weekly opening price, run a high end of this daily inefficiency, working that level essentially, right? Expanding this range where we got this high, lower, higher high, lower low, and then look at this candle up in here, right? This was when the news popped. Well, actually, this was just the 930 opening on Tuesday. So we get a volatile candle here. And initially, I mean, then eventually um, we run through that high, right? And we're going to, you know, end of the day, consolidating New York. I mean, London opens up after that consolidation. We see that push higher going into CPI. Runs lower, taps the high end of that daily inefficiency perfectly bounces right lower high so now it's looking like okay it's ready to turn around we're reversing we're going short everybody's selling in here getting caught up not having this daily potential level of support or resistance you know identified but since it's now above it and trading back down to it it's potentially going to be support it absolutely acted as support here right we found some support in there we're able to rally off of that back to that march high resist there right look at the wicks bodies never close we trade lower one more time back into that this is the next day now cpi is coming out then out of that cpi that 9 30 opening runs that low still closes above it though so respecting this range and the level basically the high end of it and then explosive right going into the afternoon taking out that high closing off of that with a two candle retracement gap lower basically consolidation here right drift lower in london open and then friday pop higher take out the high before an aggressive run lower again now looking like okay it's the shorts now consolidation in here really really getting a lot of sellers beat to sleep and then eventually just you know bringing the pain on to close the day Opened with a gap higher to start this week, but does not sustain. Been drifting lower ever since. And so that's pretty much um, the review from last week. Again, Dow Jones was the more bullish of the three. And so there's no really, in my opinion, um, reason to be looking short as we are now, as um, there's a lot of people who were, in a sense, right, already taken out for being short. So now the next line of people to be taken out that are short are the ones that sold up here. So it looked like it was already making its way back up there, essentially just coming back to 50% of the range that was created on Friday, right? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, um, just you know, reiterating the outlook to see some sort of, you know, potentially trading lower from where it's at now to this range here, and then that, you know, continuation higher. So um, that's gonna be it for me. Thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Now, you know, get back to you. Engagement is appreciated. But I'll holler at you all later. Peace.